Hey guys, as always, I'm Al, this is the Geek In Review, and I'm going to be talking about The Last of Us Season 1, Episode 2, so if you haven't seen it, this will contain spoilers. And yeah, I'm glad to say that this episode did address some of my concerns from the first episode. We do get a bit of exposition, maybe a little bit too much exposition in this episode, Given the fact that we didn't see too much of Ellie or get that much of her in the first one, this essentially really is her episode and we do get a greater sense of where the world is at and what's going on with this plague and how the sort of rules of this work. I mean really this felt like the first episode in the main story to me because last week just felt like a sort of introduction. But as always, let's get to it. So we open with another flashback this week, and is this going to happen every week? I mean, I can potentially see the benefits of that. Like I mentioned in my last review, the first episode didn't really work for me because we didn't get that much of an explanation of things like the fireflies or the government or what was going on in Boston. So if they're using flashbacks every week to tell these stories, especially what happened to like Joel, Tess and Tommy, yeah, it could kind of work. But it also could get very much lost in it, the fact that it's going to hang on this every week as well. I highly doubt we had these sort of flashbacks in the games, but hey, if they were there, correct me and let me know in the comments below. But yeah, this flashback explains how the virus initially spread, how it was discovered, and it does answer quite a lot of questions. But if you're asking me, this should have been the intro to the first episode instead of that 60s news thing. This felt a lot more concise and entertaining, whereas that whole 60s thing just didn't seem to fit or work. It was just trying to hammer in the pandemic climate change thing, which I'm not against. I completely believe in climate change and I completely believe in pandemics, but... For me, it didn't fit with the rest of the show tonally, whereas this was a little bit more interesting. Maybe because it was set in the modern world, I don't know. But what did you guys think of the intro? I'd like to hear, so let me know in the comments below. But anyway, after last week learning all about Ellie, Boston, Joel and Tess, Ellie's got some explaining to do because hey, she's the only human in the last two decades that seems to be immune from the Cordyceps virus. And Joe and Tess have some questions, obviously, because it's a plague and this is about the survival of humanity at the end of the day. And I've got some questions as well because they're still in Boston and also are they on the run from, you know, that sort of fascist regime that was controlling Boston because they killed that guard? They didn't really pick up that story thread per se which I thought was a little bit annoying. It would have added another layer of jeopardy there was, you know, stakes in this episode, and I'm going to get to that in a minute, but yeah, it sort of felt like they were discarding certain things in order to push the story forward a little bit quicker than maybe it should, or maybe they're just trying to catch up from stuff that they couldn't fit in in episode one. So, obviously, both Joel and Tess are worried that Ellie's going to turn on them eventually, as she seems to be infected to the scans that they use to detect the virus. Can't really take her back to the Fireflies or the quarantine zone either because they need the equipment they were promised for the deal for dropping her off in order to go and find Tommy and do all that stuff that's going to be coming down the line as well. And while, let's say, there is quite a lot of exposition in this episode, Bella Ramsey is absolutely fantastic. She is the star here. Especially once Ellie gets outside, because again, she's been born during this fall and was pretty cool. And we also learn a little bit about what happened in the fall as well. The fact that the government bombed cities in order to slow down the spread of the fungus. But again, once they're out in the real world, it does feel very Walking Dead to me. And we'll get a huge expo dump after huge expo dump, which I think... Half of this could have been done in episode one, and if you're asking me, I think HBO should have dropped the first two episodes back to back, because watching these two episodes, it does feel like they cut a lot out of episode one and then rammed it into episode two. I don't know if that is just me, what do you guys think? Please let me know. 
but we do learn how the virus and the fungus works and that it's essentially they're all connected like one living being so if you step on a route one of these sort of host zombies is going to know where you are pretty much straight away and you're going to get swarmed by a horde I've mentioned it before that I haven't played the games but I was loosely aware of certain things and we do get this popping up in this episode and by that I'm talking about the clickers which are more sort of further gone human hosts than we've seen in the first episode. And also they kind of set this up when they were walking towards because Ellie mentions that she's heard that there's different varieties or different sort of, you know, mutations of the fungus and its long-term effects and how it does affect people. So I knew it was coming sooner rather than later, and yet they were good. It's something that, let's say, I'd heard about, but I didn't actually really know what it looked like. And oh, although I raved about Anna Torv in my earlier review, Tess does get infected in this episode, so she's out. And yeah, I'll be honest, I'm not happy about that, because I'll say it again, I think Anna Torv is completely underrated, and I hope that this does bring up the attention of a sort of wider stream audience. And if you haven't seen her in anything before, go and check out Mindhunter on Netflix or Fringe on whatever streaming service that's on. I think it's on Peacock if you're in the United States and the UK. But yeah, I was really hacked off by this and that's me putting it completely mildly. I thought she was going to be in a few more episodes at least. She did have a hero sacrifice to let Joel and Ellie get away from the swarm, but again, it's only the second episode, so this didn't really have the impact that I think the show creators wanted it to have, because we didn't know Tess, we don't know how she met Joel, we don't know what their relationship was, how Tommy fitted into that. She could be back, because again, flashbacks, but I would be a little bit disappointed only seeing her in flashbacks and not developing the character. And again, I've not played the game, so does she last longer in the game? Let me know below. And while I think this episode did contain things that was missing from the first one, the pace didn't really work for me. It just seemed to be like exposition dump after exposition dump and a little bit of action. I get the idea that we're not fully into this story yet and that there's a lot more to come. But hey, it is still the second episode and I'm glad that they are going to try and fill in the blanks somehow in somewhere. I'm just not really sure what the hook of this show for me is yet. Because, again, it's an apocalypse, it's end of the world, it's a virus, it's zombies... It's things that we've seen before and that are familiar and the show does look good and the show does work. I'm not saying that it's a bad show. I'm just saying that for me, I don't get the hype. But as always, this is just my opinion. I want to hear what you think, so let me know in the comments below. Have you played the game? Is it living up to it? Or are you even enjoying this show? As always, I'm Al. Thanks for watching.